2025, you may have heard someone use the figure of speech, slower than molasses in winter, to describe a process that occurs slowly. Explain why this is an apt idiom using concepts of molecular size and shape, molecular interactions, and the effect of changing temperature. Okay, so personally, I want to put out there that I have never heard of this figure of speech before. Have you? Slower than molasses in winter. Uh, I guess not in the region where I'm from. But let me know. Have you ever heard of this, this figure of speech? Anyway, I guess I'm just going to have to take this for the first time and figure out what it, what it means. All right, so you may have heard someone use the figure of speech. Slower than molasses in winter. Cool. There's a lot of different things that that's going on in here. Now, the overall suggestion of slower than molasses in winter is basically talking about something that is happening slowly. Okay, so somewhere in this idiom, this has to tell me that this is happening slowly. Now, let's figure it out. The first thing that I know is that we have a substance molasses. Now, I'm familiar with molasses, right? Molasses is basically, you know, a liquid sugar, right? And it's basically where your brown sugar comes from. Brown sugar, whether it's dark or light sugar, that's the crystalline form, but the liquid form is molasses. And molasses is a liquid. Okay, now molasses is a very, very, very viscous material. Now, viscosity is always talking about the liquid's property of how resistant it is to flow. And molasses, right, if you've ever had to cook with molasses or, you know, pick up molasses with a spoon and drop it into, you know, maybe you're making cookies or something, that liquid takes so long to go into the bowl. So molasses is very slow flowing. And if something is slow flowing, that means that it is super resistant to flow, right? It does not want to flow. It's not like water, where if you pick water up with a spoon and you drop it into something, the water is just going to fall right into wherever, you know, it's landing. Molasses, just like honey, it takes so long for it to flow. And if something is super resistant to flow, that's a high viscosity. Okay, so we now know that molasses has a high viscosity. So we're getting somewhere in terms of molecular interactions and sizes and stuff. Now, we bring it in the next part of this idiom. Molasses in winter. So there is some type of context about uh, the temperature in, in which this is happening. Now, we're assuming that we are in the northern hemisphere, right? But I guess winter is winter. I think winter is hot uh, for the southern hemisphere. But in winter, in the northern hemisphere, right, it is very cold, so I just want to put that out there, that we're talking about a very, very cold winter. And the temperature has a lot of properties in terms of what's going on with the viscosity. Now, if something is very cold, that means that your temperature is dropping. And if your temperature is dropping, if you have a low temperature, this means that your kinetic energy of the material, in terms of molasses, is decreasing. So whenever you're lowering a temperature, the kinetic energy of those molecules are also lowering. So basically, if you had a container of molasses, let's just say, right, here is my molasses um, molecules, right? And it's a liquid, so they're pretty, pretty close together. And right now they're kind of, you know, communicating with each other. So I put these like little, you know, lines in it. But over time, if you are dropping the temp, what's going to happen is those molecules, the molasses molecules are not going to be moving as fast. 
They're going to be kind of coming together. They're going to be more together. And the, their movement is going to be very, very slow. Maybe I'll just put it, you know, over here, over here. It doesn't really matter. But that's the idea here. When you drop the temp, those molecules are more attracted to each other. They're more attracted. Attractive to each other. Because they are not moving as much. You have a higher kinetic energy. Remember, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So you have to be in motion to have kinetic energy. But when you're dropping that temperature, the molecules are coming together more closely. And they're more attractive. And that has everything to do with molecular interactions. When you're talking about interactions, you're talking about attractiveness to other molecules. So when you're dropping that temperature and that kinetic energy is dropping, that energy of motion is not overcoming the molecular attractiveness. So your molecular attractiveness will increase. These are your intermolecular forces. Molecular attractiveness. Or I guess we'll say increasing molecular interactions. Which are your IMFs, your intermolecular forces. So we might have gotten everything thus far. We did talk about the effect of changing temperature. As you're lowering that temperature, you're lowering the kinetic energy. They're not going to be moving as much, and they're going to be more attractive, so their interactions are going to get higher. Uh, track attractive. Um, also, I guess what I can say is I'll pull this over a little bit and I'll pull this this way because I'm going to say that also they're going to be decreasing in motion. They're not going to be moving as much because they're going to want to stay with each other. And now we just have to bring in molecular size and shape. Now just know that the bigger you are, the more mass you have, the slower moving you are going to be. So if you're dropping the temperature, you're decreasing your kinetic energy, decrease in motion, more molecular interactions. And if you want to just take it as a side note, as just knowing that the bigger the shape, bigger the shape and size, the more uh, interactions. The more interactions and the slower moving the molecule is. Molecule is. And basically, these two things answer the question. So now it kind of makes sense why it is slower than molasses in winter, because molasses is already slow to begin with, but if you're dropping that temperature, you're dropping the motion even more. And your, you know, your viscosity is going to get higher. You're even gonna be more viscous. You're gonna have more interactions. So, I mean, this is slow, slow, slow. I hope this, this makes sense. And let me just maybe put a big one over here. There we go. Beautiful. And there you go. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Uh, thank you for viewing the video. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. We're almost at 35,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. The channel would not be here without you guys as you are the ones that are studying and, and, and watching the videos. So thank you so much. I'm so glad that we're able to help you guys out in your classes. And we are definitely looking to helping you out with more subjects coming your way. So stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.